Recently, TT Artisans sent me this 28mm f5.6. But wait a second, it's only f5.6? What's the point of that? I can't even get enough of that sweet, sweet bokeh. It's what Instagram craves, right? But what if I said, there's more to life than just bokeliciousness? But Brando's got what plants crave. It's got electrolyte. I was once like you. I cherished the boca. I loved it. I was one with it. Ah, oh, bokeh-licious. <laughs> boke test. My life was a boke ball. And then, something happened. I heard of this thing called layering and zone focusing. Ever since then, get somebody coming down from the left and then coming up from the right side. I was off layering everybody in sight. You get a layer, you get a layer, you get a layer. It's my favorite thing to do. So let's see if this little lens will help feed that need. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! But what is zone focusing? Zone focusing is exactly what it says it is. Focusing on the zone of where you want your focus to be. That means you need to consider before you take the photo where you want your composition to be and in what area you want your focus to land. Think of it like a shotgun effect. While some people like to open up to f1.4 and get the exact point of focus like a sniper rifle, stopping down to f8, for example, will get everything from close up to mid range in focus. Now, a lot of people think that manually focusing means to slow down, but to me, it means I can speed up. So I'm kind of already focused before the camera comes up to my eye. Something closer, somebody's coming over here, somebody's coming over here take the shot and that's how that's how I roll left-handed yes like focus your lens or camera before any AF system can focus for you because that's literally what you are doing you are focusing before you put the camera up to your eye or when shooting from the hip or chest height so today I'm gonna to show you some examples of zone focusing in action these are by far not my best photos but they serve as an example of what can be done especially on film when wasted frames are a concern. It's important to note that not everybody is gonna be in a condition where zone focusing matters, where it's critical. Where zone focusing is important is when you have a busy street with multiple subjects that you're trying to layer. There's many large cities in the world like Tokyo, New York, London, where zone focusing is very effective and useful. But if you're in the middle of a small town or a studio apartment, you don't need a zone focus. If you're doing a portrait session, you don't need a zone focus. Everyone needs to take a look at their particular situations and understand if zone focusing is the right call for you. If you have a small, fast moving child or pet, zone focusing might actually be useful too. Today is a bright and sunny day. Lots of contrast in the area and that's perfect. We really want a lot of good lighting so we can create some dynamic photography. In feet or meters, you should ideally have a good sense for how far things are away from you. Especially when it comes to focal length, zone focusing with a 28 or 35 millimeter lens will be the best. Zone focusing with a 50 millimeter lens is absolutely possible and I do it sometimes, but the difficulty and miss ratios will likely be high for you, so I can't really recommend it. Also, with a 50 millimeter lens, your photos often have a different purpose than layering multiple subjects at once at close distance. So don't make your life harder for no reason. Stick to a 28 or a 35 when zone focusing. I know AF systems and cameras these days are amazing, especially the Ricoh GR has snap focus, which I use a lot and love too. 
but a manual focusing camera and lens system really gives you 100% control at all times. I can blame nothing else and nobody else but me. Oh no! We suck again! It's a skill I'm practicing often, and I don't always get things right, but it's so satisfying when I do. And in the end, personal satisfaction is key to me when doing street photography. Every lens has different zone focusing scales. So pay attention to them. Those numbers written on your lens, they have a purpose. They let you know at what distances your lens at certain aperture ranges will be in focus. Guess and check. You can do this drill at home or when you're out shooting. Just pick out an object, guess how far it is from you, adjust the focus to what you think that distance is, and then check if you are right by using the rangefinder patch or by taking a photo. The more you do this, the more you'll be able to estimate correct distances, which is crucial for zone focusing. I've been practicing my zone focusing for a couple years now, ever since I started shooting with an actual rangefinder camera. Sometimes I'll zone focus with a normal SLR like my Canon AE-1, but because with that camera I don't have any lens that has a focusing tab, or at least one that I haven't installed onto the lens. I don't zone focus with my SLRs. I'll zone focus with a rangefinder. So what do you think? Do you zone focus or not? And why? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, but especially stay humble.